Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. My wife may be put in a garden out there today. What a mess. So, something new came up. It's really cool and it's way above my pay grade. So I forwarded it to Eker Symphony and she looked at it and said yes. And then she explained it, which still was way above my pay grade. But it's awesome because it points to May 21st, which on the Enoch timeline is May 21st, Savon 6, sorry. That's Shavuot, that's the 66th day of the year. Um, so let's get right into it. Yep, that happened again. What day is today? That happened yesterday. That keeps happening. That 1111 must mean something. It must mean something because so many have been seeing it for so many years. It's like Amos 3 7 that God will do nothing lest he notify the prophets and the saints first. And uh, a rapture is very much something. So I wonder if he's notifying all of us that we're seeing this. And a lot of people uh, say it means destruction. It also could mean the day the, that the rapture occurs. It is the day that, um, uh, I'm going to forget the word. Uh, it's the day that uh, tribulation begins. Uh, it's such a hard word to remember. Oops. I, w I found something here. <clears throat> this is separate from what, it, what uh, this person that emailed me uh, had found. But I wanted to point this out. I, I got a... a a comment in there, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, being out in that dirt's got me uh, scratchy. I want to go through this uh, real quick. Um, we've beat this horse to death. I mean, we we know what it means. Um, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. You see this verse occur in Matthew 24. This is what he was talking about. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. This is speaking to the end of the millennium, 1,000 years from now, that nobody knows. We cannot, and, and there's no point in it, sit here and try to figure out when the millennium will end in 1,000 years. We don't know. However, I do believe either moments before or days before the actual rapture does occur of the church and then subsequently the rapture of the great multitude that appear in heaven in seal six, they will know. Whether I said like it's a day or an hour or three days, I don't know, but there's going to be some kind of a warning that occurs. In Mark, this is directed to the church. These are some good people. They, they tithe, they, uh, they, they give money to the poor, they, they do all kinds of things. Uh, they go to church in their Sunday best, and they are better than you. They um, are the ones that uh, are, are counting on their works, that they've done so good that they're, that they're all definitely going to heaven. And we see this in here, but then in mark it throws in here and th an entire religion has been based around this on this verse right here and it's a shame because it's a misunderstanding again the bible when you read it you have to precept upon precept um, verse upon verse and you will gain understanding as to what something means and here we have but that day and everybody ignores it tries to shuffle it under the carpet and you just can't it's written it's in the bible it's important and it means something but of that day and hour knoweth no man no not the angels which are in heaven neither the son but the father now they have been researching this since it was written 1,900, whatever, 93 years ago, Jesus uh, rose. And so this was written, and they've been debating this forever. And I went to do a big research. I knew that this could not be speaking about Jesus. We know Jesus Christ is God Almighty. He is the creator. He is the word that became flesh. He is the one that died on the cross for us. He is the one that... 
uh, created us. He is the name we say when we breathe, and his, his name is written in our DNA. We have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This is not speaking about Jesus. This is speaking about the sons of God. Here in Mark, heaven and earth shall pass over. Doing running two concepts here. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Speaking again in Mark, which is written to the church, that nobody knoweth the day or the hour. And he's speaking to the end of the millennium, the end of everything, when God will destroy heaven and earth and create it new. And uh, those th- that event will occur, and nobody knows the day or the hour of that event. Now, here in Luke, I've showed you this many times, we will be caught up before they don't know the day or the hour. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. That's us. We're watching. We're dreaming about this every day. We're studying. We're trying to figure this out. We can't think of really anything else um, other than, than than this, we don't watch a lot of television. We do a lot of studying and, and mathematics and, and dates and everything else trying to figure this out. And uh, it's uh, it's what we do. It's what we do. We're watching. Uh, we watch everything that comes up on YouTube. We like, comment, share, and subscribe to these channels that they might make it through the uh, tribulation or through the rapture of the bride into the tribulation so that it will be good for them to help them through their their portion their uh, their dispensation so blessed are those servants whom the lord cometh shall find watching verily i say unto you that he shall gird himself jesus will dress up like i said before as a waiter and make them to sit down to meet. He will have us reclined, relaxing at a table, and he will come forth and serve us. He will come and ask you, what would you like today for your dinner? And he'll, of course, Jesus doesn't need to write it down. He probably already knows what you want. But he's going to come, and he's going to serve them. You will not find that no man knows the day or the hour while relating to the bride. There are There are verses in here like, and this know if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, we will. We will already know. We we have been watching. We he would have watched and not suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh an hour when ye think not. So he's telling them also, not just the bride. We're already in heaven. We're at that meal. He's telling them to watch as well. It's their turn to watch. That keeps happening too. Here's an explanation. I don't know if this is from the year 594, but look at listen to the word, the the uh, how he how he uh, words this. Gregory of Tours offered a semantic solution to Mark 13:32 when he suggests that son was not referring to Jesus but to the people of God. So he says, we shall here make answers to the heretics who attack us. <laughs> I think this was written in 594 uh, after the death of Christ. And they are under attack because of this verse. And they have mockers and scoffers even back then. The mockers and scoffers have been around for quite some time. Asserting that the son is inferior to the father since he is ignorant of this day let them learn that the son here is the name applied to the christian people of whom god says i shall be to them a father and they shall be to me for sons for if he had spoken these words of the only begotten son he would have never he he would never have given the angels first place for he uses these words not even the angels in heaven nor the son showing that he spoke these words not of the only begotten but of the people of adoption so in order to prove this you have to go to the bible the precept upon precept we have to get our answers out of the bible 
Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. He repeats it twice. And it doth not yet appear that we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So you can see very clearly that uh, you don't need to skirt around that verse whatsoever. He's not talking about Jesus in that verse. He's talking about us. We do not know at the end when that thousand years. Jesus is every bit, 100%, God Almighty, Creator, Savior. Okay, I'm giving you a shout out. Today is Woman's Day. Today are the watch women of the YouTube community. I have subscribed to so many more than I am going to show you. Um, I just limited with time. I probably have over 50 or 60 uh, women that I'm subscribed to. They do an amazing job. want to applaud you on the hard work that you've done. I pray that you go and like and uh, subscribe to their channels. The like helps the algorithm wind up in somebody's feed that otherwise might not hear this. And it is important because sometimes um, people don't want to hear what I have to say. I could say the same exact thing as somebody else could say. One of these wonderful watch women could say something exactly the way I do, but it will come out of them as an understanding to somebody else who could hear them and not hear me. So it's important that we help boost their channels. I don't get anything out of any of this that I do. Why do I boost everyone's channel? Because the most important thing to me, honestly, is that when we're gone, that somebody's channel, if it's 10 of us, if it's 100 of us, I mean, there are pockets of these communities all over the planet. We're just here in the United States. We get a lot of people from other countries uh, into the YouTube. And when I go to look at the, uh, uh, the, I'm really bad with words. My wife worked me so hard out in the garden, I can't think of anything. Good excuse, right? Um, yeah can't think of the word it's a it's when you group people in different groups anyway I have a lot of people from foreign countries in here statistics something like that anyway the stats show that I have some but now in their countries where they're from I would imagine their stats would show more of, of like if it's Germany for example in Germany there would be you know 90% Germans in that YouTube, but there, it's all around the world. There are pockets of us all around the world. Just like the Bible says, every tribe, every nation, every tongue, and every people is a group of the 24 elders. And the same thing is said as well in seal six, only that group is numbered before the seals are open. The other group is not numbered. It's so, it's so huge. It's just such a great number that no man can count of every tribe, every nation, every tongue, and every people. And so it's very important. God loves those people. They love God. They're going to church every week. They're doing everything right, just like the rich man that approached him. There's, there's, there's no hate or animosity towards these people. They're very good. They're, they, they're walking that line. They have faith, right? It's the people that know nothing about any of this, that don't care to know. They're the ones that we're trying to get to. They have faith. The Jew, God loves the Jew. He loves the Jew. We pray for the Jews all the time. And at the end, they are going to look up and weep over the one that they realize that they pierced. They messed up, and they're going to realize that. And that's all God is waiting for. And that's the point of tribulation, is to get people's hearts changed and turn. Repent means turn. It doesn't mean stop sinning. Contrary to what everyone says, not everyone, a lot of people. Most people actually don't. <laughs> I have to watch how I word stuff. Contrary to what some people say, 
to repent is not to stop sinning. It is to turn your heart towards Jesus. We're all messed up. We're all sinners. There is no amount of good you can do to warrant heaven. It's all his work. And it's that it's so hard to relate that to, to somebody who's working. It really is. But how hard is it to relate it to somebody who has zero knowledge and you say, hey, guess what's about to happen? And they're like, really? I've heard about some stuff like that. But they're the ones we have to be careful for because they're going to fall into the concept that it was aliens that came here or that took us away. Or there's even a teaching out there now that says the ones that will be taken out of the way are the wicked ones, which is they had twist in it. They took one verse in the Bible and they twisted it. And I have to find that verse. I don't remember which one it is. But now, um, the Jewish people, God loves them. He loves them deeply. They, had they recognized who Jesus was, none of us would be here right now. None of us would have any hope for salvation. So we, in their error, thank the Jews, and we love the Jews, and we pray for the Jews. Um, they are God's people. And had they not erred in what they did 1,993 years ago, had they not made that massive error, none of us would be here right now. It would have been over with, but they did. So here we, here we are. All right, here's the shout out. First up, looking up, she has a Facebook and a YouTube. She does amazing stuff over on Facebook. She posts all of our stuff over there, and uh, she loves the Lord, and she has all of these. Uh, she, she finds everything. She literally finds everything and puts it in here. It's, it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of like our Discord where we find everything and put it in our Discord as well. And uh, I like this video here with a three-year-old that says Jesus is at the door. you got to go listen to that. It's awesome. Again, please subscribe to her channel. Like her channel. That her channel might make it through the rapture, which I believe is about to occur. And I'm going to show you why on something I found. She is, um, I forget... I forget where she's from right now. Uh, again, I follow so many people and watch so many videos every day, it's hard to keep up. But uh, please go subscribe to Christina. I'm going to not do her last name as service. Mutris? Mutris? Sorry about that. Um, please go subscribe to her videos. She does uh, an awesome job. She... I've watched many of her vis uh, videos. She does street preaching. She goes out into the street. She approaches people. And this, to me, is greater than um, making a YouTube. I'm here by myself. Uh, that right there is probably one of the hardest things to do is to go out into public and just randomly talk to people uh, about Jesus Christ. And it's awesome that she does that. So she, she does a fantastic job. Genevieve Brazel. Please go subscribe to her channel. Leslie Dayton. She's also doing a lot of uh, uh, research as to when this is going to, to go down. She only has 780 subscribers. She does a very good job. So please go subscribe to her channel and like her videos. Have you ever watched her? She is so fun. She's so bubbly. She loves the Lord, and I love watching her videos. She's very upbeat and... Uh, uh, does a very good job in her videos. Colleen! Colleen's Encouragement Minute. Um, you can go into our Discord. You can join her uh, YouTube. And uh, she has a wonderful story about how God has made her a promise. And uh, found her, it's been some time now, uh, she found me or I found her, I don't remember which, but she appeared in Discord and got to talking and uh, her testimony is uh, unbelievable. It's fantastic. So it's it's awesome. And uh, just like promised, just like promised, uh, she's still here with us to uh, make videos and stuff. And all of her videos are about hope. Every single one of her videos are named Hope. And she makes new videos all the time about hope. And it's awesome. Please go subscribe to her channel and uh, 
find your favorite video and like it so it might make it through. Christy Windland, she does a lot of work with Aaron, and she's awesome too. She, uh, they literally go into Stellarium, and uh, she, she does a uh, fantastic job. They do funny stuff sometimes. You know Aaron over at Got a Minute, and uh, and here's Christy's uh, YouTube. She does an awesome job. So please go like and subscribe to her channel, Christy Windland. Angelina K. Bell, she does a lot of um, world events, and uh, they're short videos, but they're awesome, and uh, she does a lot of world events pointing to the return, soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ, and she does a fantastic job as well. She only has uh, 1,500 subscribers. If, please go subscribe to her channel. Blue Heaven. Everybody knows Blue Heaven. Gigi. I just was passing. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about her. But she has an awesome YouTube. She's fun, and uh, she looks at world events and everything else. She's a fantastic uh, person. Her channel's actually larger than mine, so she's. Uh, it, but I'm. There might be some on mine that that aren't subscribed to her. So please go subscribe to her channel. Equal Symphony. Ikra Symphony and I email quite a bit. She's awesome. She is an engineer. She is a numbers person. She knows numbers. Uh, like I said, somebody sent me an email and it went right over my head, way out of my pay grade. So I forwarded it to her and she went searching and, and I'm going to show you her answer in here as to what we found. And it does land perfectly on the Enoch timeline on Shava Oat at 11.11. It'll blow your mind, honestly. But I don't understand it. Kim Fisher, when you hear a word, and this has happened to me. I had a dream the other day. I'm not even kidding you. In my dream, and I talked to my friends. I have a, a We have a group chat that we talk in. Kevin, which we call Spinebreaker, and um, Tony from the Cataclysm, Tony Early, and Will from uh, Worship and Watch. And we all just chat in there about different things that's going on and talk about them. And I got in there, I'm like, I, I had a dream about a gold cat. Like, it's gold, like color gold, not just like a golden cat, but like a gold cat. And uh, it was the weirdest thing, and, and we're trying to <laughs> trying to figure out what that meant. It was so strange. Maybe it was just a dream, right? You don't know. But when you wake up in the morning, have you ever heard something like one of those um, YouTubes? I, I think one of those YouTubes I pointed out, um, she woke up hearing her doorbell, but her dog didn't make a sound, but she certainly heard it. So like upon waking up, you get this word. And I think <clears throat> that we should start writing those words down that you get when you first wake up, you know, like I woke up the other day, um, my wife had to go to work because I had to work on Sunday and she didn't, and I had to take Tuesday off, and but she didn't. She worked Monday through Friday and we work at the same place, so which is awesome, by the way. We've, my wife and I have, uh, been working at the like when I own my business she worked there with me and now that we have regular jobs we work together and so it's 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 pretty cool we've always worked side by side everywhere that we've been since we've been married it's awesome I really enjoy that but I woke up Tuesday morning I didn't have to go to work and I was trying to get out she's like what are you doing you don't have to get up I'm like I have to do something for you I know there's something I need to do for you and she's like no, there's nothing you need to do. You need to go back to sleep. <laughs> I said, no, there's there's something. I don't remember what it is, but there's something that I'm supposed to do for you this morning. And I, to this moment, I don't know what that was and why it was so important for me to do something for her. And she's like, I don't know. You make my sandwich every morning, but I'm going to make it. Go back to sleep. And I just didn't, I still don't know what that was that I had to do for her. But it was, it's those kind of things that you get these words from God and you got to listen to them. So here's the email I got from, let me show you who it is because I don't like taking credit for other people's work. Heaven Comes Now sent me this. If it's his or if he got it somewhere else, I'm not sure. Um, it might be a female. I'm not, it, it might be a guy. I don't know. It's non-binary, of course, so I can't really tell. So that's who sent this. Hi, Mike. Repo Man. I left the comment on your last page. Please look at it. I get so many, and I'm sorry, but I get hundreds and hundreds of comments and I try to respond as much as I can but there's so much it's just, it's just me I'm all alone there's nobody helping me so I attempt to do all I can but 
I also, you know, I have to work, so I, I can't always do that. I at least try to give a heart to everybody that, that uh, I see the comment. So he says, oh, so, yeah, it says it was him. I was using Stellarium, and I think I discovered a massive thing. He says, you bang on about C1111. So I'm assuming he's, he's from somewhere else because uh, the, the word he used here I think might be uh, Australian. I'm not sure. I don't want to uh, say that. But based on the language, using the word bang, he's, he's not from the United States. So, and I could be wrong about that. Well, I was curious. I wanted to see when K moon crosses a straight line between alpha and ta and beta ta. Alpha ta means alpha, omega, father, and cross. Beta ta also means el nath, gift of God. It crosses this line on yeah, I don't want to repeat what he said there, but he's speaking freely. Uh, uh, Precious line on 11.11, at 11. On K 21st, your Enoch rapture day. This is when Gemini begins when we leave Taurus. Chuck Missler talks about K Maseroth for 30 minutes and tells you that Taurus represents Christ. Gemini represents Tay, marriage of Tay Lamb. This is nuts. The border line is there if you were a starship crossing a straight line uh, in the border. He said something about Discord. I don't know what happened here. I don't run our Discord. Uh, I have moderators that do that, but I stop in there all the time. I actually have a room in there. I believe the dead all rise at Tay Rapture. Some took it badly. Can you check with people? Who used Stellarium? Oh, it's Paul. So it is a guy, Andrew Paul Timpson. Okay. So I forwarded it to uh, Ikra Symphony, which anything like this that goes over my head, I do. And she says, I, I had sent the three American eclipses to Jarrett, Supernatural by Design. With and she, I guess she's emailing a lot of us because she does a lot of, when it comes to numbers, she's really good at it. So I know what he's saying. And then she attaches something. Likewise, he's saying that the moon is in alignment between Alpha and Ta, the star Alpha Taurus, and Beta Ta, the star Beta Taurus, El Nath. In Greek, the first and last are the Alpha and Omega, but in Hebrew, it's Aleph Tav. Tav can be spelled Ta. This does occur on May 21st at 11.11 a.m. in Jerusalem. She puts an exclamation point. That's all I understand about all of this is that date is the date on the Enoch timeline of Shavuot, May 21st, which is Sivan 6, the 66th day of the year. And the sun is in the constellation of Taurus from the 15th of May through June 20th. In the Hebrew, El equals God, Elohim, and Nathan, gift from God, whom God gave, giver, but El Nath isn't a word in Hebrew per se. Something about Yiddish with that. I think from the 15th to the 21st May are very high watch days as there are a lot of heavenly signs in short in a short period of time. They are all converging. However, for me, May 18th is better, but that's splitting hairs. So, as you can see, a lot of people are working together to try to figure stuff out. There's some kind of uh, astronomical line that happens on May 21st. It was no surprise to me that that very important day fell on a day of this Enoch timeline, starting in the year on May 17th, March 17th. almost said that wrong. I will say something wrong and then run with it through a whole video. Go back and watch it, and I'm like, <laughs> where did that come from? So... March 17th being the head of the year. Every month, Nissan has 30 days, AR has 30 days, Savan has 31 days, um, Tammuz has 30 days, and it's a simple count from there. If March 17th is the head of the year, Nissan won, and Nissan has 30 days. If you want to know what the end of Nissan is, you just add 30 days to it. You add 30 days to March 17th, and you would wind up on you know, the first of IR, and I don't have that on here, or do I? I don't, but... 
you see what I'm saying? It's I've showed you this before, so let me get back into this real quick. Whoa. All right. I showed you a couple videos ago. May 14th, the year or the date that Israel became a nation, you could literally say that is the day there are 13 hours and 45 minutes of daylight. It varies about 30 to 40 seconds over the course of time, but it always comes back to 1344 and 1345. Down there at the bottom in blue, 600 years from now, that day will always have 13 hours and 45 minutes. You could say, all right, Israel became a nation on the day that has 13 hours and 45 minutes in it in the year 1948. And you would be able to go in here and find out what day that was. It never changes. It did not, has not changed since creation. It will not change until the end of the millennium. It will always be the day that has 13 hours and 44 minutes in it. This is 600 years from now. This is currently, right now, you see it'll vary by a few seconds, but it doesn't get too far off 30 seconds or so. On May 14th, in the year 2023, there are three, 13 hours and 44 minutes in this day. You can always relate it to that day because the time never changes. This is why we see the story written in heaven as the sun processes through the sky every 2,000 years. We can very clearly see the story from Gemini all to Taurus, where the flood had Gemini, where God and man were together, Taurus, where the sun was in the horns, and that's where the flood began, to the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world 2,000 years ago, to currently the sun is in Pisces. But guess what? The days don't change. This is why I had to find this calendar, because I don't think the days change based on moons. The moon has nothing to do with when you start the moon does have to do as a harbinger of a warning harbinger of death a harbinger of of problems to come it is there to point us to things that are about to happen blood moons and all that but it is not a date setter i don't believe here again 2023 in 1795, this is as far back as I could go on this program. I can go further back, but what happens is they changed the date by 10, 11 days. They did this in 1582, and I'm going to show you that. But on this day in 1795, 200 years ago, it's still 13 hours and 45 minutes hasn't changed. It never will. It'll always be that unless they change the calendar. This is what happened in the year 1582. This program is attempting to fix it and they did it over the course of, uh, of uh, I think a week or so um, where, they, where they, they didn't fix anything. They just tried to adhere to, they tried to cross over from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar. That's what happened here. This was a Julian calendar. This calendar has been around since 65 BC. The calendar previous to this was forced on the Jews by uh, those that conquered them in 400 BC. That calendar actually was only around for about 350 years, and it's the calendar where they view the moon to start their year. That calendar was forced upon the Jews uh, back in 400 B.C. up until about 62 B.C. where the Julian calendar took over. The Julian calendar was an awesome calendar. It started its year on January 1st as well. However, they didn't take into account the procession of the sun, so they were going out of time. Gregorian fixed this problem, and they fixed it by adding... 10 days to the calendar. It looks like 11, but it's actually 10 something days. On this, on Thursday, October the 4th in 1582, on Friday, it became simply the 15th. It moved forward 10 days, 11 days. This is uh, history pod this video is from seven months ago he goes in and explains this very well as to what happened on october the first uh, fourth 
in uh, 1582. It explains why and how it had to be fixed because the Julian calendar was ticking out of time and Gregorian calendar came into play. Uh, it's almost identical, but it removes that problem of it ticking out of time. And please go watch this video. So, with that all being said, May 14th in the year 1600, this program will only let me go back to the year 1600, a little over 400 years ago. You can see it is not the 14th, it is the 4th, and the time is still 1345. So, it doesn't change. Time doesn't change. That day will always have 13 hours and 45 minutes in it. Always. And that happened today. I thought that was pretty cool. All right. I think I am done. I want to go in here and show you this real quick. May 18th, May 14th, right there, IR 29, Israel becomes a nation. On this day, May 14th, Abraham was born in 2023 BC. Abraham was given a new land. He crossed into Canaan on May 14, 1948 BC. You've seen this on other YouTube channels. This lines up exactly with us. Israel came back into its land in 1948, and 75 years later, as of tomorrow, Israel will be 75, counting from May 14, 1948. Um, Isaiah 53's YouTube channel, uh, he actually has room in the Discord. You can go in there and converse with him about his findings as well. Um, and I'll put a link to the Discord uh, in, in the uh, comment box below uh, this video. Um, Israel becomes a nation. May 14, 1948, he found the verse that says all the trees. All the trees came into play where the United Nations recognized Israel as a nation on May 11th. Now, that was two days ago, May 11th of 1949. So counting from May 11th, 1949, Israel has just turned 74. Isaiah 53 found that, and he has a very good video on that. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow will be the day. In 1948, Israel became a nation. That is seven days from Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. I've showed this before. Jesus rose from the grave. He spent the day walking around was seen by many. But he told Mary, do not touch me, for I have not ascended my father you will find nobody touches him except for verses in Luke and in John. John is referring to the 144,000 written to. Luke is written to the bride. There's only two passages where they've touched him. You will not find anyone touching him in Mark. You will not find anyone touching him in Matthew. Of course, Luke could. He's the bride. We'll be hugging him in, Jesus, uh, in, in heaven. We'll be hugging Jesus in heaven. Jesus rises after he defeats death that afternoon. He comes back in his new body, as we see, to Thomas in the upper room. He goes through a locked door. They are locked in that upper room because they are afraid of the Pharisees harming them. From that moment forward, Jesus walks with them for 40 days. He does not begin walking with them when he rises. He begins walking with them for 40 days after he sees Thomas in the upper room. They would not be locked up there had he already been walking with them for seven days. He had not. He had rose to heaven for those seven days. That afternoon, he rose very early in the morning, but he rose that afternoon and came back to Thomas in the upper room, and he walked with them for 40 days. On the day Jesus ascends, it is three days before Shavuot. Three days, not ten. It's three because they try to move those seven days back and call it ten days from Ascension Day. It is not. He ascended 
on down there at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. He ascended on May 18th. May 18th is five days from today. I would suspect we might see some something. I don't know if there's a warning or not. Like I said, it could be minutes. It could be days. If there was, there would be a, some kind of a warning tomorrow on May 14th. Um, 75 years exactly after Israel becomes a nation. Seven days before Shavuot, the Feast of Week, the day the Holy Spirit descended. This is the day that, up here at the top, is exactly five months and ten days to the flood. The time being cut short, perhaps, to five months. The date is Sivan 6, 66 days from the head of the year. Imagine my surprise when I did that math and I was like, What? This is the day Enoch was born, and this is the day Enoch was raptured. He was 365 years old, indicating that we have a 365-day-a-year. That is a that was a Sunday when you do the math from the day he rose, the head of the year. I think this this year, I believe it's a Thursday, but uh, I'll have to go look. So, May 18th is the day that Jesus ascended. This is a... Thursday this year, and May 21st is the day the Holy Spirit came back down. Could we be raptured? Could we see something indicating that on May 14th or any time, literally before May 18th, are, do we ascend as Jesus did on um, the day Jesus is on Ascension Day? Uh, three days before the Holy Spirit comes back down to the to the people, or the tribulation begins, to for the people of the tribulation. I don't know. We're still. Oh, and also, as you saw, and I hope Ecro Symphony, this is a shout out. Will you please make some kind of a video explaining what that means on at eleven eleven? Was that? Did she say eleven eleven a.m. or p.m.? I didn't even pay attention. 11-11, at 11-11, on May 21st, there is some kind of major alignment in the heavens that happened on May 21st. Shavuot, Feast of Weeks, the day the Holy Spirit descended, the day Enoch was raptured and born at the age of 365, is Savan 6, the 66th day of the year. So... I don't know. It's all I have. I saw that and I was like, hey, there's something else. And every time I find something or somebody sends me something that goes over my head that I don't fully understand, I will try to investigate it and figure it out. So that's a very good piece of information. Uh, thank you for that. And um, could we be seeing something at any moment that says, all right, this is it? Or is it going to just stay quiet and just happens? Um, it won't be quiet once it happens because a lot of things are going to go down. So, Repo Man 64, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And go to a quiet place by yourself. Nobody needs to know, and you don't need to tell anybody. You don't need to go and call anybody or go outside and tell, anyone, and tell a whole crowd of people, hey, guess what? I'm going to go in there and accept Christ, and I want you to recognize how great I am for doing that. That's why I say that. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 5 and 6, go into a closet by yourself. If you go quietly by yourself and pray, I will I basically show you in public. I will show you off in public. So it's a private moment. That's why I say that. Between you and your Lord. And accept him into your heart. And then go tell everybody. Then go tell somebody else that they might do the same thing and accept the Lord into their heart. If you feel, if you're at home and you're feeling this tug and you're wondering, is any of this real? Watch this videos over and over and I just don't know. And you feel this tug. Go, just go, kneel down and say whatever you want to say. Just say whatever you want, like you're talking to a friend. Just go in there and talk to him and accept him into your heart. It's the most important decision you'll ever make in your life. There is nothing that compares to this decision whatsoever in your entire life as that decision. Because there is going to come a day where everything we've ever talked about is going to happen, just like we said it was. And it's going to not only happen once, it's going to happen again 
at seal six. And it's going to happen again at the end of the tribulation. It's going to happen again at the end of the millennium. Yes, at the end of the thousand years, Satan will be loosed to tempt who? He's going to only attempt those who win the millennium. One last chance. One last chance for everybody who didn't have a chance now, I think, will be resurrected and put into the millennium. I don't know for certain. There's not a lot of information on it in the Bible. But there is only one way into heaven. Only one. And remember, to be in the presence of God, you must be covered by the blood of Jesus. So there is no such thing as not accepting him and making it through. There just doesn't, it doesn't exist. Because after this, the heavens and the earth will be destroyed. And he will create a new heaven and a new earth. And that holy city that he built for us and has been building for us, that has many mansions, is going to set down in Jerusalem. And that's where we're going to live. And it cannot do that. It cannot do that. Remember, Jesus is God Almighty, but he wrapped himself in earthly flesh in order to be in our presence. He purposely became human to save us from our sins, and he can be in our presence. But aside from that, him in the person of the Father cannot. We would melt. Uh, just like it said when, when uh, Moses wanted to see him, he says, you can't. And just that little glimpse that he got, just a little glimpse of the back of his leg. What happened to him? He turned white. White. His hair turned white. His beard turned white. He turned white, white, white. And that's what happens. You just can't be in his presence. So yes, after at the end of the millennium, Satan will be loosed to tempt. And it's going to be such a strong one, if it's possible, even the very left. But he, he won't be able to do that. So we won't be tempted. We'll be in perfect bodies. It won't be possible. But they will be. And I think during that thousand years, we're going to be working with them. We're going to be talking to them. Some of us will be, it says, will be kings and priests. So we'll be ruling over them, but in a nice way. And they will, we will teach them about what happened the previous thousand years. And it'll be like a story to be told to them because they won't know. They'll just be alive. And to die during that time, there's no pain in childbirth, so they're going to multiply quite a bit. There's a lot, there's going to be a lot of people in that millennium. And to die during that time, before you're 100, is going to be a very strange occurrence. And there won't be any hospitals. I had a dream. I had a dream, and I, and I told, I told um, uh, Spineberg, he works in, uh, Kevin, I told him, he works in the medical industry. And uh, I told him, from what I saw in my dream, you're going to be a doctor, but you're going to get leaves off these 12 trees, and you're going to know which combination of those leaves to heal this person. Um, it's going to be a hospital, but there won't be any machines. It'll just be the trees, the healing of the nations. Like, the, like I said, that's the dream I had. It was weird, and I told him about it. He's like, that's eh, crazy. But who knows, right? Uh, I guess we'll see when we get there. And uh, from this side, we just keep watching and trying to figure it out. So anyway, let me get off here. I did everything. Go to a quiet place and uh, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And uh, maybe, just maybe, we will see you in heaven on the tomorrow or the, on the uh, 18th or the 21st. Maybe. We'll just keep hoping and praying. All right, YouTube, we'll talk with you later.